This week I'm talking with Cristina Ballesteros, who teaches Spanish to kindergarten through fourth grade at ASU Prep. Ms. Ballesteros, uh, how long have you been teaching at ASU Prep? This is my second year. Great. And, and did you teach before coming to ASU Prep? I did. I taught in Tucson for Tucson Unified School District. I was a bilingual kindergarten teacher for six years. Good. And what, what grades did you teach there? Um, mainly kinder, and then I did a lot of long-term subbing when I was being a young mom, and I did anything from first grade all the way up through fifth grade. Fantastic. So, so what's your approach to teaching Spanish to kids that are in such young ages or young age groups uh, here at ASU Prep? What are some of the things that you're doing in your class? What are some of the objectives that you hope your students would learn? Well, the main thing with Spanish is to be able to use that language, especially for the younger children, because they are like sponges when it comes to learning a language. So they make it to where, or I make it to where they have fun learning the new language, they have fun learning concepts of language, which they can transcend into any other content area. Um, what, what we do is I focus on a lot of the strategies, the learning-based strategies that we do here at ASU Prep, and I incorporate that into the lessons so that they're getting a reading strategy, but at the same time they're learning a new language. I see. So I, I know at ASU Prep and probably like a lot of urban schools, we have a, a high percentage of students that are, are Latino students that, mm -hmm. that might already come to us having uh, be able to speak Spanish. So how do you deal with that as a teacher where you have students of, of different abilities, some that may already speak the language, where, and you have other students who are, have no background in speaking Spanish? I incorporate their knowledge into the lesson itself. They become, a lot of times I call them Spanish teachers, I call them Spanish coaches, they love that. I strategically place one at each of the different centers or the different reading groups that we have going on. And uh, the students themselves know that they can depend on not just me, but as their Spanish coach, they can depend on them. So it encourages the Spanish speaker to focus more on their leadership abilities as well as what they're doing already. Because unfortunately, they may have spoken the language, like myself as a young child, but they don't have the ability to write in Spanish or read in Spanish. So we use, the, we use that as a platform to get them ready for the next level of Spanish. So what is your most memorable moment of teaching? Oh my goodness. I think it would have to have been from um, Last year, I had a little boy that had never spoken Spanish ever, and he wrote me a thank you letter last year in Spanish, all on his own, and he was in second grade. So for me, that was, that was the highlight of my year because I thought, you know, here you go through the entire year, and you get children singing songs and singing chants and playing Spanish games, but to actually see it in writing, it was, it was pretty gratifying. That's great. Uh, you also lead the Spanish Extended Day program here at the school. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of things are you doing in, in Spanish Extended Day? What we do is we, we focus a lot more on games and more social interactions. Um, we've done a lot of things on culture, and I introduce the students on just a love for literacy in Spanish and the fact that there's poems written in Spanish, not just songs, and there's games and um, just a lot of different genres of Spanish literacy that we do. Great. One of the things I like to do with these interviews is to, to give the viewers, our parents and families, a little idea about our teachers and what they do outside of the school. So what are some of the things that you like to do when you're not teaching? Sleep. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> okay. kidding. Um, I'm a busy mom. I have two teenagers. One is in high school and one is in eighth grade. And so I do a lot of parent volunteering as a parent, you know, as their mom. Um, my daughter's a cheerleader, so I'm involved with a lot of her high school cheerleading stuff. My son plays baseball, so every midweek and on weekends, I'm always at the park with him. And I'm a grad student. I, I attend ASU, and that keeps me extremely busy. So I don't get to do a lot of extracurricular activities besides with my kids and with ASU. I could see where you value that sleep time. That's, that's a busy schedule. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we certainly love having you at ASU Prep. You're doing such a great job with our students and really giving Thank them you. the foundation of, of the Spanish language, which is going to be such valuable tools for them to have in the future. So thank you for all that you do for our students, and, and uh, happy holidays. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. It's an honor to be here. Great. Thank you.